Now that we have everything set up, let's go ahead and start writing some code. We're going to get a minimal application going right now. The first thing we're going to do is import view and get something rendering. Before we do that, we have to be aware of a few different versions or a few different bundles of view. Let's go ahead and take a node modules look and see what's inside of here. If we scroll down to view, we're going to see there are a number of different builds available. These are going to be used depending on your environment. For example, you may have some server rendered code in Node.js, you may have some ESM modules, that's what we're going to be doing here, or you might have the global build for your browser from a CDN. We're going to talk more about modules later on, but for now we're going to use a specific build. It's going to be view.esm-bundler.js, and that one is right over here. So let's go ahead and import it and get it started. First thing I'm going to do is create a script tag, and we're going to give this one a type of module because we are using something called ES modules. The next thing we're going to do is import some code. So I'm going to say import all as view, and that's going to be that very specific build we talked about, which is view slash dist slash view dot esm hyphen bundler dot js. With a bit of luck, this is going to work. Let's go ahead and give it a try. I think I spelled this incorrectly. It should be bundler. Now that we have that, let's go ahead and create a very simple application. The next thing I'm going to do is create my app by saying const app to create a new variable, and that's going to be equal to view dot create app. And the first argument is just going to be an empty object. We'll talk more about this one later on. The next thing we're going to need to do is get something rendering, and we need to give this a point to mount in the DOM. So I'm going to come up here and create a new div. This one's going to have an ID of app, and this is commonly how you're going to start up your application. Now that we have that, we have something to mount on. So let's go ahead and mount our application by saying app.mount and passing in the div. If we save this one off and head back to our terminal, we're going to start up our server by running yarn vite, and we're going to pass in the source directory. Let's see if that one's working. If we head over to the browser and refresh the page, we're actually not going to see anything yet. There we go, that's the correct one. But we're going to have to get something rendering by putting some content inside of our div. So let's go ahead and do that. Just to get something working, I'm going to have a h1 and just say hello world. And with a bit of luck, this is going to show up when I save the page, and there it is. This is all good and fine, but we can do something a little bit more interesting, so let's go ahead and do that now. What we're going to do is see how you can communicate between your view app and your HTML templates, and we're going to do that by using a variable called message. We're going to use these curly braces to interpolate the JavaScript expression. So we're going to jump down here and declare some data. The way this works is you're going to create a data function, and this is going to return an object, and all of these variables are going to be automatically available up here in your view application. We're going to create that variable called message, and as you expect, it is going to say hello world. Let's save it off and see what happens. And that is now working correctly. We have hello world, but it's a whole lot more powerful now. We're using a JavaScript expression down here. It's going to be a variable, and we're using the interpolation syntax to render it up here. Everything is working as you would expect. Let's go ahead, jump into the next lecture, and see some more exciting features of Vue.js 3.